Hey Valley Metal, tonight we're going to work on dividing fractions, which sounds complicated, but I got to tell you folks, this is one of the easiest targets of the chapter. All right, but first, let's start off with something fun. How long would it take you to walk from Paris, France to Moscow, Russia? Say what? It's 1,750 miles. Ask your parents, maybe they can help you with that one. We'll be back with the answer to that trivia question in a few minutes. But first, 5.7a is our target. I can multiply fractions without the calculator. Let's do this thing. All right, the problem du jour. Alexandra has two plates that she wants to cut into quarter sections for a craft project. How many quarters will she have when she's done cutting? Well, we can figure that out by just drawing a picture, right? Two plates cut into quarters, the answer is eight. But can you do it by multiplying or dividing fractions? Well, let's see, it would be dividing, right? Because we have two divided by one quarter. All right, well, here's the way you divide fractions. You multiply by the reciprocal. You just flip it. So instead of 2 divided by 1 quarter, it's 2 times 4 over 1. Remember, these two are reciprocals. We learned that last lesson. Well, let's do it. 2 times 4 is 8. 1 times 1 is 1. So you got 8 over 1, which is 8. Alexander will have 8 quarter sections of plates, just like we drew, only we did it by dividing fractions. How cool is that? All right, it's only going to get better. All right, a couple of quick review pieces here. Divide, to divide a fraction, multiply it by its multiplicative inverse, or its reciprocal. We talked about these two terms yesterday. So 7 eighths divided by 3 fourths, you just flip this fraction and say 7 eighths times 4 thirds flip it to its reciprocal and you'll get the answer. So what I'm trying to tell you in a nutshell is that 8 divided by 2 is really the same as 8 times 1 half. What? Check it out. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 8 times its reciprocal 1 half because this is 2 over 1, right? So 8 times 1 over 2 is 4. If you don't believe me, do it. 8 times 1 is 8. 8 divided by 2, 4. Is that mind-blowing or what? All right, so what does that tell us? It tells us that 3 divided by 3 fourths. If we don't, we don't want to divide those fractions, we don't have a calculator, flip it. Flip the fraction and multiply instead of dividing. 3 times 1, or 3 over 1 times 4 thirds. See, I just changed the sign, flipped the fraction from 3 fourths to 4 thirds. So let's do it. 3 times 4 is 12. 1 times 3 is 3. So you got 12 over 3. The answer is 4. Right? So how do you check the answer? Well, let's go back to this 8 divided by 2 problem. You might remember in your elementary school, somewhere, a 4th or 5th grade teacher said, 8 divided by 2 equals 4. You can read backwards to check. 4 times 2 equals 8, right? Yeah, I knew you'd remember. You can do the same thing here. 4 times 3 fourths equals 3. Well, let's just double check this. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Yes, it worked. All right, so you can use that way to check it. I'm going to have you try one right away. You try 6 divided by 1 third. Just flip the fraction and multiply instead of dividing. Go. I'm back. Let's see how you did. All right, I like putting the 6 over the 1. I always do that. So I flipped it. Instead of 1 third, I have 3 over 1, and I'm multiplying. 6 times 3 go down here. 6 times 3 is 18. 1 times 1 is 1, so I've got 18 over 1. Sweet! The answer is 18. So 6 divided by 1 third equals 18. Let me check the answer. Put that little bar in. 18 times 1 third equals 6. Well, let me do the work. 18 times 1 is 18. 18 divided by 3. It's 6. Sweet! I love it when a plan comes together. There's always a yeah, but though. Yeah, but what if it's two fractions, Mr. Dudley? It just doesn't matter. 
It just doesn't matter. Just flip the fraction and multiply. Okay, sorry. I get a little carried away sometimes. Three-fourths divided by one-third. Just flip the fraction. Three-fourths times three over one. One more time. I just flipped the second fraction. Three-fourths divided by one-third. Three-fourths times, just flip it to three over one. So three times three is nine. Four times one is four, so I get nine-fourths. If we break that down into a mixed number, it's two and one-fourth. Well, let's just check it. When checking, it's best to leave it in the improper fraction form. So nine-fourths times one-third equals three-fourths. Well, this is a little complicated, but let's just try it once. 9 times 1 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12, so I have 9 twelfths equals 3 fourths. Yeah, 9 twelfths equals 3 fourths. Just a different form. All right, time for you to try fractions. Uh, how about this one? 3 fourths divided by 1 eighth. Just flip the dumb fraction and multiply instead of dividing. Go. All right, let's see how you did. 3 fourths times 8 over 1, right? Just flip it. So 3 times 8 is 24. 4 times 1 is 4, so we've got 24 over 4, which, of course, 24 divided by 4 is 6. Let's put it in and see if it works. 6 times 1 eighth equals 3 fourths. Our check. Let's see. What's 6 times 1? 6 eighths. 6 eighths does equal 3 fourths. God, I love it when a plan comes together. All right. Try this one. one. Last one before our ticket. Two thirds divided by one half. Just go ahead. Did you flip it? Did you multiply instead of dividing? Isn't that cool? Let's see how you did. Okay, here's two thirds. I flipped it and multiplied it times two over one. So two times two is four. Three times one is three. So four thirds is really equal to one and one third. That kind of makes sense. Two thirds divided by one half. It's going to go in there at least once. But let's just double check to make sure. So I'm going to use the improper fraction again. So two thirds divided by one half equals four thirds. I'll go backwards. Four times one is four. Three times two is six. We'll have four six equals two thirds. Hello. Yeah. Just reduce it. They're the same. All right. Sorry. I get excited about some things. All right, you should be getting excited about your ticket to the show. Here you go. Two problems. You do these and you bring them to Uncle Dano on the next day and we'll be very in good shape. All right? All right, time for the uh, ticket. Or, I'm sorry, time for the just for fun question. How long would it take you to walk from Paris, France to Moscow, Russia? 1,750 miles. All right. I don't know, quite honestly. But what I do know is that, check this out. In 1891, this French guy named Sylvian Dornan walked from Paris to Moscow on stilts. Yeah, stilts. And it only took him 58 days. 1,750 miles. Look at that. Here's France. Moscow's over here. Hey, there's Finland. 1,750 miles. Okay, so apparently, um, Sylvan, Sylvian Dornan uh, came from this area in Gascony, France, where the uh, fields were marshy and rocky and uneven, and people in this area were basically shepherds because they couldn't grow f crops on the land. And so people became very good at walking on stilts. They'd, they could walk right through marshy areas on these stilts, and this guy was proud of it and took off one day on a little journey. Yeah, 1,750-mile journey. Anyway, that was a good trivia question for the uh, family dinner tonight. All right, thanks so much for listening. Have a good night. Bye.